In this video I'm going to be giving a demonstration of cracking WEP security and showing you just how easy it is to gain access to a network protected by WEP. Now to do that I'm going to be using a Linux distribution known as Backtrack and Backtrack is a penetration testing distribution that was built from the ground up exactly for purposes just like this. Now you can find the download link in the blog and you either need to load that onto a live USB or CD to boot from or you can do what I've done which is actually install it into a virtual machine. Now I'm using Oracle VirtualBox here which is free to download and install again just like Backtrack and because I'm using a virtual machine the only thing that I need to do here is to actually connect my USB Wi-Fi adapter into the virtual machine. So to do that we just access the settings for the VM, go to the USB section and then add the wireless LAN adapter onto the machine and power it up. Now if you're booting from a live CD or a USB you won't actually have to do that because the OS will already have access to the hardware. I only need to route that in because it's a virtual machine. Now whilst that's booting up, this here is a list of the commands that we're going to use that again is down below in the blog. And hopefully with just that small selection of commands there we're actually going to be able to break the web security and gain access to the network. Now whilst Backtrack is booting, most Backtrack installations are protected by a username and password and the username is just root and the password is T-O-O-R which is just the word root backwards so if you get present, when you get presented with a login screen as we have done here just type in root and then T-O-O-R and you can actually log in now this is the command line interface for Backtrack here and to get to the graphical environment just type in start x all as one word and hit enter and what that will actually do is put us into a graphical environment and give us a much more familiar desktop. Now once Backtrack has finished booting you want to open a terminal window up at the top and the first thing that we're going to do is just have a look using the ifconfig command at what network adapters are available to us. And the one that we're looking for here is WLAN0 which is the wireless LAN. Now this here is the interface name and it could be slightly different for you, it could be WLAN1 or ATH0 or 1 which is short for the Atheros chipset in some wireless cards but you just need to remember what the interface name is to substitute into the following commands. And the first one that we're going to do now is ifconfig WLAN0 down which will actually just power the adapter down for a moment and the reason we need to do that is because the Mac changer program actually requires the adapter to be offline to spoof the Mac. So Mac Changer is the program here that we're going to use. Dash M is the MAC address that we want to spoof and then this is the interface that we want to spoof the Mac on. So as you can see the current MAC address there of the adapter and the new spoofed address now just so that nobody can identify the card based on the Mac. And then to bring the adapter back up is just ifconfig wlan0 up. And the next thing we need to do once the adapter is back online is to enable monitor mode on the adapter. And to do that we use airmon-ng, start, and then the adapter name. And the thing that we're looking for here is monitor mode enabled on mon0. So this is the new interface that we're going to be using now, the interface with monitor mode enabled. So the next thing that we need to do is start aerodump, which is a packet sniffing program. And at the minute we're going to start it with no parameters, just do aerodump-ng mon0, or whatever your monitor interface was called. And what this is actually going to do right now is have a look for all of the Wi-Fi networks that are in range so that we can identify any that we might be able to attack. And the one that we're going to try and attack here is called Isengard. As you can see it's protected with web security. And once you've identified the network you can just hit Control c to cancel that command. And the best thing to do here is actually just to take a copy of the BSS ID which is the access point's MAC address because we're going to be typing that in quite a bit. So. What we're going to do now is actually we're going to restart Aerodump, but this time it's going to be a slightly more targeted attack. And we're going to target the BSS ID of the access point that we've just copied, and we're going to specify the channel. And if you have a look up here in the channel column, you can see that the access point we want to target is running on channel 11. So we put in channel 11. Dash W is the file that we're going to write to, so we want to do hack. WEP, we'll call it, and then we need to put the interface that we want to listen on, which is MON0. So if you hit enter, 
you'll see this time error dumps running and it's actually only brought up the one specific access point that we want to target and that it is now actually capturing traffic on that uh, access point. Now to be able to actually have a, a fair chance of succeeding at cracking the WEP key we need really at least 10,000 data packets here and each packet has got something called an IV in it which is an initialization vector and we need at least 10 to 15,000 of those to have a fair chance of succeeding of cracking the key. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video here now whilst it's sniffing traffic off the network and hopefully once it's got 10 to 15,000 I'll come back and we can run the final command here which is using a program called aircrack to try and just crack the WEP key from the data that has been sniffed from the network. Okay so Aerodump's approaching the number of packets that we're going to need for our first attempt at cracking the WEP key here. Now this is unfortunately one of the only prerequisites that we have on cracking web is that there's actually a client associated with the network generating traffic and as you can see that client has been identified here at the bottom so this is the access points MAC they're associated with and that is the MAC address of the client now there are ways to kind of fake authenticate with an access point and then generate your own traffic and there's only two commands that are needed for that that can be run in separate terminal windows and I'll detail them below in the blog but they aren't always successful so and sometimes we do just need to depend on having a client connected and actually generating traffic for us. Now if there's multiple clients connected to the Wi-Fi network and they're all generating traffic you can very easily get to the amount of data that's required and as you can see we're just touching over 15,000 data packets here so what we're going to do is have our first attempt at cracking the web key now you can start cracking sooner if you wish and having um, having a run at it and the program will just carry on attempting to crack with the new data as it is saved into the files so what we're going to do is we're going to use aircrack ng which is the cracking program dash b we're going to specify the bss id of the access point the virtual machine is just having a bit of a go slow there so pasting the bss id and we call the files hack web now what Airmon actually does sometimes is it will start to break them down into multiple files once the file gets to a certain size and it'll just call it hackweb1, hackweb2 and so on and so forth. So when you're specifying the file name if you just do hackweb and then use the wildcard star it will actually replace that with any character that it can find so it'll use 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So it will actually include all of the files that Aerodump has captured. So as soon as you hit enter Aircrack is going to start cracking that key now. So it's running a cryptanalysis attack on the traffic that it's captured and there you go, it's already broken the key. So this here is the web key for the network. Now if you want to take the key and then use it in a machine somewhere to log onto that Wi-Fi, all you simply do is just take this part here but without the colons. So the key for this network to log in would be 13EF8 four six zero zero and that right there is the web key for the network it's similar to kind of any standard web key that comes with a router out of the box it's just a bit of a mishmash of letters and numbers and with that you can now go and log on to that network and use their Wi-Fi